at the same time, like we was talking about the parole hearing, you basically saying, I did do it, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I caused this pain to, you know, this person's family. Right. Yada, 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 or whatever, however they caught her shoot to. You got to do that just to look. You got to do it just to look like something to get out. Make no mistake about it. And let me say this, and then just for the records before we go, I want, uh, I don't ever want to come across as downplaying this experience or downplaying the injustices that are that exists within our uh, judicial system, within our criminal justice system. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, yeah I seen that. I, I actually but wrote that But that happened a lot, though, don't it? Where people try to frame other people on other people's murder. That happens regularly. Yeah, yeah. They came up. They I heard they came up with this investigation the same at the same time he died, like the same week, within the same. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's crazy because, um, the the guy was Lee Page. That's who he was. That they saying Robert Lee Page that your dad had something to do with him dying. Mm. You know what I mean? They say a lot, but a lot of it is just speculation. After you know after. Someone passed, they're not here to defend themselves. So, you, you know, a lot of times they're trying to clear the books, too, to say, let's get these under the rug so we can get these cleared out of our books. But don't you still have to prove it, though? You have to prove it. But you are locked up innocent. You are locked up innocent until you're proven guilty. Right. You feel me? Right. Yeah, so they could have held you in up five years until they proved it, or they didn't. You know what I'm saying? That's real. That's so real. So you just never know, and you fighting an uphill battle when you dealing with these people and these law, and you dealing with Louisiana. And they they don't want to, they don't want to let you out and say I'm and sorry, which they're not slim. gonna say. And he soldier slim, right? And they're not gonna say I'm sorry, and they they gonna find a way to keep you in, even if they know that they're wrong, because they're gonna have to pay. Because you can come out and start you know a lawsuit on them. That's just like I said with Mac. Mac knew he didn't do that, but. You know, you done been in jail, so you know the parole hearing. Like, you basically got to say you did it. You mm -hmm. got to show remorse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, when they convicted you. Yeah, and, I was convicted and, and, and of you, manslaughter. And you you had to, did you cop a plea? You had to. No. I, they gave you, the judge gave you. Yeah, you I was innocent. You said, I'm innocent all, all the way, way to through. the end. All the way to the end. Just like, yeah. Uh, the jury, I was actually charged with murder. I was facing a life sentence. But the jury came back in yeah. their deliberation with a manslaughter verdict. And a manslaughter in Louisiana carries zero to forty. I was given thirty. And um and you tried appealing and all of that. Yeah, I tried yeah, everything. Ended up everything going, was denied. Twenty twenty one years 21 and years. uh I was pardoned by the governor, by Governor Edwards. So wow. thank but you, Gov America. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Governor Edwards. Yeah, was, uh, but, but after man. all of that, one thing I wanted to know because a lot of people when you think about being wrongly convicted and that you are there, how angry were you when you were in prison and how long did it take for you to get over that anger? Um, so the weird thing is, um, I probably was angry momentarily. Really? Momentarily. When I first got in that, that cell, there were a few things that I prayed for. It was, it was a couple things that I prayed for. And I'm not I'm not a big religious person, but I do pray. Um, I what I have prayed, and I do. Um, one of them, the main thing was that I didn't want to become black-hearted. I didn't want to become black-hearted. Um, that was the main thing. So man, like even if this man didn't do it, like he probably had to do that, you know, just to see daylight again, like to live yeah. and fight another day, like uh -huh. that really be people's situations. That's exactly how it be, you know, and that's horrible. It's very horrible when you didn't do something. You have to sit there. Like, I cringe at the fact of Mac sitting there for 21 years and the way his demeanor is and how he's... When we interviewed him, he was so just poised and, and, and so forgiving. I would never, like I said before, I, I'll say it every time, interviewing Mac showed me what a real humble person is after going through 21 years of being locked up like that. He showed me too. Innocently. 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 That means everything else everybody crying about a lot of time, they can need to just get over it. But the part that killed me about it is the fact that he was innocent and he's like, 
the way how they threw him under the bus like that and he couldn't come out and be like okay i'm gonna sue them because i was innocent and stuff like that he couldn't do any of that because at the same time like we was talking about the parole here you basically saying i did do it i'm sorry you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i caused this pain to you know this person family right yada 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 or whatever however they caught her shoot to you got to do Wait, that just to look. You got to do it just to look like something to get out. Make no mistake about it. And let me say this. And then just for the records, before we go, I want, uh, I don't ever want to come across as downplaying this experience or downplaying the injustices that are, that exist within our uh, judicial system, within our criminal justice system. And, um, and within law enforcement, I don't ever want to come across as um, downplaying the, the 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 enormity of how it negatively affects our community, certain our groups people, of people, our culture, right? Certain certain cultures, right? So that stuff is real, but just on an individual level, on a personal level, I feel that every person is in control of their destiny, and the way you see the world, the way you perceive it, is what um, is what it is. Because we all define our own reality. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. And then you're gonna turn around and say, Well, I ain't do it, you know what I'm saying? And file a lawsuit, but you just said you did to get out. Do you yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I'd have been like some people do say I'm innocent till the day they die. If you're gonna lock me up for a hundred years, lock me up, but I'm gonna hold on to my innocence. I'm not gonna say I'm sorry because <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that trip because it's easy to say that. It's easy to say that, but you've been in that 21 world. years. You have <laughs> been that 21 years, and your first chance you get to possibly think about right. it, Mac, and get to see his son. Right. Grow up. His no. like, I know his son. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And like he just not getting, you know what I'm saying, to reunite with his son. Like you know, like in, in a, a free world. In a like he. Think about it. And it's yeah. just like, uh, like Man, I'm going to say whatever I got to say, but just to incriminate get the next person to get up out of here because I ain't no rat. Right. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.